there was no way in hell I'm going to follow you after that. <laughs> but then again, I know what Tony's doing, so I don't want to follow him either. So, good night. <laughs> You know, so, um, but actually, and this doesn't help for my 20 minutes either, but, but. <laughs> so about 4 o'clock, I keep saying this, right? You know, it's like, it doesn't come, it doesn't come, you know. But, but what, one of the things that, one of the things that we thought about when we were putting together these doc talks is that we are so very different. And, and Preston has a completely different message than Tony and different message than me. You know, so it is now, take, take all the really cool stuff he just said, now forget it, because <laughs> now we're starting. Okay, so, so anyway, so I'm going to talk about my research, and, and my research is, is on humor. But actually, what I'm going to try to do today is I'm going to connect humor, the research that I've done on humor, and the research that John Medina did on the brain. He came up with 12 brain laws. So he took uh, neurological science, and he came up with 12 ways that the brain can be used in terms of education. And so I'm going to take some of those connected to humor, and then hopefully give you some practical ideas on what you can do both in leadership, learning, service, and, and research, I hope. So everything I'm going to tell you today is research-based. The first thing you need to know is that when people try to remember speeches, that no matter how good you are, and by the way, I'm damn good, after 10 minutes, 10% 10 of you are going to start drifting off. No matter what, after, after 10 minutes, 10% 10 of you started drifting off at, during, during Preston's presentation. After 15 minutes, 10 more percent of you are going to start taking mental vacations. That's just how the brain works. And Medina showed us that, that the brain is easily, easily confused and easily sidetracked. After 20 minutes, 25 percent of you are going to start having 20 sexual fantasies, all right? So I make no apologies for the pleasure I'm going to bring 25 percent of you right now, all right? <laughs> Now one of the things, the reason that that happens is that, and, John, and Tom Angelo said that this morning, is that you can actually listen four times faster than people can speak. So there's a reason in your brain of why you actually start drifting off. That's why it's so hard sometimes in the conference center that people are speaking and you start drifting because that's how your brain works. Your brain has to work very, very fast. That's one of the rules of the brain. The other thing about the brain... <laughs> By the way, these are all Democrats. I want that understood. Okay? Yeah. Uh, there'll be a quiz later on if you can pick them all out on, on who's dancing here. But one of the things that you have to understand is that there are certain facts about humor that I'm going to connect with the brain. And so let's talk about facts on humor. See, people think that humor is just something that, oh, they're trying to make somebody laugh. There's not. There's, there's a purpose for using humor. And the purpose is connected to the brain. It's connected to teaching. First of all, humor is something, and laughter is something that has been with us for millions and millions of years. It's actually a natural phenomenon within people that you learn how to laugh before you even learn how to walk. Preston's kids learn how to laugh as part of their identity, as part of your identity, because, because it's a natural phenomenon. Exercise boosts brain power. You've heard this before. You know, you want to stay healthy, you want to stay alert. That's one of the reasons we do Zumba. We love Zumba so much in the conference center is that it helps with the brain, the exercise. Well, here's something that you might not know, is that when you laugh, you actually burn calories. So I'm not only helping you with teaching today, I'm giving you a diet as well, all right? So the more you laugh, you actually start burning calories. The other thing is, is, is one of the brain rules is that vision trumps all other senses. Now, when Preston actually talked about this, I was interested to see what he was going to say about feeling. But in terms of learning, vision will trump feeling in terms of learning. Vision is extremely important. The brain, how the brain works and how you learn is, is important. And one of our speakers even talked about this, that, that within 10 seconds or so, you know, what you see is your first impression and, and it's your reaction on what you're going to learn and how you're going to learn. <laughs> Because of what you saw, you thought it was funny. 
I use that because in class, what I do is I ask my students, what were the facts in that case? Did you see the dog? Did the dog eat the sandwich? Who ate the sandwich? And the answer is no, you did not see the dog eat the sandwich. You only saw the dog take the sandwich off the counter. Someone else might have eaten the sandwich. You don't even know if the sandwich was eaten. You know, so there's a lot of, there's a difference between your assumptions of where you go with it and then the facts that are with it. And that's what research is all about. You know, your brain has to see these things and then it's got to be processed. And that's what, that's how humor can actually help with it. And we're going to get more examples of that as we go along. Brain rule number three is that we're all wired differently. And if you can't figure that out by now after seeing Preston and me, you've got that, you know, so everybody is wired a little differently. In fact, I think one of my students yesterday in class said, I like the way you present. You're wired a little different, but you're, I like the way you present, so I'm taking that as a compliment, all right? Um, but my research actually indicates that there's between 40 and 50 different laughs, and that the, the way you laugh is actually completely, it's like a language in and of itself. There are fake laughs, there are wholehearted laughs, there are like little giggles. Um, how you laugh actually tells something about it. And actually, one of the research will tell you that you laugh a lot more at when a supervisor tells you a joke than when a peer tells you a joke. And you only tell jokes to people that are your equal or below who will, and you don't like telling jokes to your supervisor. You know, now, by the way, I want all the jokes come to me, so don't be afraid to tell me jokes, I like them. But, but there's, there's a social, there are social rules when it comes to humor, and it, it, it relates to relationships as well. So here's a short little video to show you how people are wired differently. of our program is to try to be welcoming. 
There was a reason that the third year students welcomed you when you came here that first year. It wasn't because we want to put them to work and, and, and we want them to you know, suffer like everybody else. It's because we want to create this environment that would be welcoming among the peers to come here. It's all about brain research. And they were, then, then doing a little bit of humor actually adds with it to reduce the stress. That's the whole idea behind it. Research on, on humor actually tells you that if you have a good sense of humor, that if you live a life where you like to laugh and you do laugh, you can actually add up to eight years of life. So I've just given you a diet, and I've just added eight years to your life. So this, this presentation is worth it right there because I've cut down on your medical bills and I've, I've helped you add more time to your life. Um, but that's what humor is. Humor is powerful. And, and when I was walk, going along and doing research, I'm like, geez, if it can do that, I mean, literally, if it can, can help you, you know, lose weight and it can help you, you know, live longer, there's got to be something to it. And so delving a little bit deeper is this, and that is that, that the brain is all about survival. And I've talked about this before in a lot of my classes, is that, that your brain is, has one main function, survive. You know, you've got to stay alive. It doesn't like details. You know, it likes the big, lean, mean pattern-making machine. That's what a brain is. You know, and that's a line stolen from Nancy Blair and Mike Dickman and Tony Frontier, is that how the brain works. But the brain evolves, and the brain has evolved. One of the things that you have to remember is that, is that we have always liked laughter. And in fact, children learn, learn laugh 100 times a day, while adults only laugh 13 times a day. That's, that's, that's good news and bad news. It's good news because your brain evolves. Your brain figures out there are certain things I have to analyze, there are certain things I have to synthesize, there's information I need to know. And one of the things that unfortunately that kind of kicks up here, something that's funny, something that's emotional, into a fact. I want you to remember this fact, that kids laugh more than adults. And I want us to laugh more because there's benefits to laughing. And if I can connect something emotional with a new fact, I've stored it into your brain. That's the whole idea. If you can, if you can make an emotional impact, it's kind of like remembering where you were on 9-11. It was such an emotional impact, you remember that. And if I can make that emotional impact like Angelo was doing today, showing his granddaughter, that helps you remember things even longer. Laughter is the shortest distance between two people. Now that's just an expression, but it's an important expression. It's a research expression. People build relationships built on humor. You know, I mean, my friends, Tony and I are friends. We joke about it. He likes the Chicago Bears. I like the Green Bay Packers. He gives me a hard time about the Packers. I give him a hard time about Chicago. It's, it's a friendship that goes even deeper when you can make fun of each other and have fun. Like introducing me like that, which I will get back at him for. Okay? <laughs> so, I remember things. Actually, that's not true. I'm old. I forget it. So, anyway, so you're safe for like a long, long time. But... But the whole idea is that, like, when you go to work on Monday morning, one of the first things you do is you find somebody you like, your friend, and you tell them a really cool story that happened over the weekend, or a movie you saw, or something that was really funny on TV, because that's that relationship building. Telling jokes is relationship building, and that's why I try to do it in class. When I'm teaching stats, I know you guys don't like stats, I get it, you know? But if I can have a little fun, I reduce the stress, I build a relationship between you and me, and then you'll listen to me a little bit longer. You know, at least I hope. And that's, it's all about teaching. It's not about me, and it's not about the joke. It's about teaching. And as Tom said this morning, it's about learning. I'm trying to help you learn. Laughter is social. Research tells us that you laugh 30 times more when you're in group. And you're going to laugh more today than if I would just be telling you jokes by, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. And I need that. Actually, when you watch TV, and you watch a comedy, and you hear a laugh track on the background, you ever hear it do that? Um, pay attention sometimes, see how often it's there. Those researchers know what they're doing. They put in that laugh track because they want you to laugh. And they put the biggest laugh before a commercial comes up. And then if they can get you laughing, because laughter is social, if they can get you laughing, and then they can show you a commercial, you make this connection with feeling good. Oh, I need to go buy a new iPhone because I'm laughing. And that's the, that's the psychology that goes behind it. So I can use the same psychology. If I can get you laughing in the classroom, you're going to have a good time. You're going to listen to each other. You're going to listen to me. And you're gonna, we're going to be friends. And you're going to learn more stats. 
That's what it's about. It's about making those connections for learning. Um, we don't pay attention to boring things. That's Medina's brain rule number four. Is that, that remember, the brain is all about survival. And if something is boring, it's not going to hurt my survival. I don't care about it. So the brain from years and years and millions and millions of years ago has learned to ignore boring things. So we've got to do something different in the classroom to make it not boring. And that's where humor kicks in, okay? So rule number four, we don't pay attention to boring things. <laughs> Funny? Because you know Tony's not boring. He's just, it's just the opposite. If Tony were really boring, that's not funny. <laughs> Thank God he's not, you know? But, no, but that's actually the rule of humor is to take something so outrageous, like saying he's boring, and blow it out of proportion, and that's what that's doing. Now you learn your second rule of, of humor, alright? So using humor, education is the key. You gotta know what humor is and why it works. You know, how do we learn? And that's what a lot of our speakers have talked about throughout this whole presentation. One of the things is, is that, is that brain rule number five is short-term memory. Repeat to remember. There's a lot of research out there that actually says you have to hear something between five and 15 times in order for you to remember it. So brain rule five says that. Brain rule six says long-term memory, repeat to remember. So when you hear us repeating things time and time again, it's not because we forgot that we told you once, it's because we're trying to help you remember it, because that's how the brain works. There are other ways to connect uh, memory. This is how the brain works, is that everything you see, hear, feel, smell, and touch every day uh, goes into your brain. And thanks to, to Preston, we learned that feeling is extremely important. But everything you see goes into your brain. If it's immediate memory, it can be dumped out right away. Like my phone number, like certain things that you, I was like, I don't need that, I'll dump it out. And your brain does it automatically. In fact, when you sleep at night, that's one of the things your brain does when it's waving, it's called, and you dream, is that it will dump things that don't make any sense for, for our short-term memory. To get it into long-term memory and get it into your belief system, we've got to find some tricks. Because it only likes broad categories, lean, mean pattern making machine. It doesn't like details. So one of the tricks is to start with the general and work down to the specific. That's how the brain works. The second thing is make it very practical. If I can make it practical, I need to know it, I'll remember it longer. The third thing is make it emotional. Preston just went at your heart, you know, and he did a hell of a job making it emotional. You're going to remember that because he knows how the brain works and how you remember things. I come at it differently. I try to make it funny. And if I can get you laughing, then you can connect something new, something you learn about stats, to something that's funny and you remember it longer. So, your brain is cognitive, emotional, and reflective. This is what your brain looks like. Everything you see, hear, feel, smell, touch goes in your brain goes into your amygdala. Your amygdala is the emotional center of the brain. The amygdala is the bottom part of the, the brain here, down, below the brain stem. And that's the emotional part. That's the fight or flight. That's the part of the brain that goes, oh, do I, is this the problem? You know, so, so it's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, do I run from it or do I have sex with it? Those are the two choices, you know, you get. And so everything you, you know goes in there. I'll just catch up on that one, okay? So just like, all right. So, but that's but that's what the that's what the amygdala does. And if, and if I can and if I can spark your amygdala, if I can spark that emotional center and make you laugh, you're going to go, oh, stats isn't so bad. You know what? That's really funny. I can connect something funny with something I thought was really sadistical before. You know, when people call it sadistics instead of statistics, okay? And so so that's what I'm trying to do with the amygdala. This is what your brain looks like. Your brain is made up of billions and billions of neurons. Your neurons look like your hand. Is that a neuron actually has these dendrites. And you're going to learn all of this in Tony's class if you haven't already, which I know you have, but 